Hello and welcome back to our garden. Now this week we're going to show you what seeds are coming up in the prop where then we're going to set some begonia and busy lizzies. We'll show you how to do it to hopefully get them to grow. Now looking at the seeds I've got very very little onion come up at all. Now I shall give them another week and then I shall abandon the seed setting of the onions because it's all fresh seed and the compost is good. The compost is okay because the tomatoes are now ready for potting on. I'll show you those when we get to the greenhouse. The All the onion seed don't seem to be doing very well but as I was saying we'll give it a week and if they're not germinating or improving we'll abandon these I shall buy some sets and put them directly into the garden so they've got a chance these are the red barons got a few but not many at all for the amount of seed that went in there that's another onion and there's one in it and I'm afraid one onion is not good enough these are bullhorn peppers They've come up wonderful, I'm very pleased with those. Now that's how we stand with the seeds in the propagators. The tomatoes, well I'll show you those when we get down there, very pleased with those. Now we'll show the begonias we're going to put in. That's the busy lizzies. Uh, they're an F2, they're not an F1, but we'll use everything we get off them we will use. If they don't germinate very quick, we can go again at this time of year. The begonias are these. These are also an F2. I think you'd have quite a job to get an F1 begonia. There'd be a lot of work involved pollinating them. But that's, that's pretty enough. Now these are our own begonia seed that we collected off the ones we had last year packet of seed for begonia cost four pounds each that's quite expensive and I think the busy lizzies they was three pounds it's all worked on the codes now you see so if it's E it's so much and if it's G it's on something else if we can grow them from our own seed it will save us quite a bit of money and to buy them in the well-known garden centre begonias were four pound for six and they weren't awfully strong plants at that neither so if we can get these to work then we'll do it with you to grow it from our own seed i'll show you how we do it likewise busy lizzies or they're called busy lizzies because when they're ready for when the seeds are ready, if you touch them, they fire. So if you get a little bag and touch them, you can actually collect the seed quite easy. I'll show you how to do that as well. Now this is begonia seed. It's one of the finest seeds that we can get. Weight-wise, it actually costs more than gold. Now the first thing I'm going to do, this water's tepid. So if they do get cold they won't grow, grow at all, won't even germinate so we'll put some of this tepid water on it as well I have wet it and I have it in, in the prop so it is quite warm but we'll just do this as well you'll see why when, in a bit when we're done these are for begonias the thing is with begonias when you're doing them Whatever you do, don't sneeze or cough, else they'll be gone. <laughs> they are so fine, it's unbelievable. Now, I'm not going to dip them out on my hand. You'll have to see them best you can. But that little mark in the bottom is the begonia seed. Very, very fine. So now we have to scatter that onto this. Uh, think that might just make one line. What do they say is in them? 
Uh, it doesn't say on there. They say there's an average of 2,000 seeds in there, so you can see. But we'll probably only get one line out of them, but we'll spread them best we can. But it's very, very fine. Can you see it now or not? It's like heavy dust. Um, once it's a compost, you don't even see it. And that's it. It all came out in half a tray. We'll do both into here and then we'll use our own into that so we've got a comparison. So these this time will go on this side of the tray, hopefully. If any come out at all. Here we go. If we get a quarter of what we put in germinate, that would be nice. Now that's on some nice warm compost. I've got a stick on label somewhere for this. So I'll finish this one so we can put the label on because you can't see really see it once it's done. Now what we do now, I've chosen trays that haven't got holes in the side because all these others have got holes in because they are fruit trays obviously. There's a few holes in the bottom for heavy drainage if you do get watered too much. And the other thing is, a little bit finer than that, the acid. Remember this is tepid water, it has to be tepid. Don't use vermiculite or anything to cover them or even compost, just leave them like that and put some cling film, I'll turn it that way, cling film over the top, like that. I think I'm going to put some new scissors on my Christmas list this year. There you are then, we'll cling film that down nice and tight. Now remember water will settle on this but that doesn't matter they'll be in there until we see green and now we'll stick the label on the side so we know that they are begonias and then that straight into the this side of the prop because this one's on a thermostat control we'll take the onions and those sweet peppers across and we'll put the begonias there and that is warm under them so they should be fine got a nice piece of good cling film on them try and get yours tighter than me but that's that's the idea now this one we're going to use our own seed there might be a bit of uh, Bit, some bits from the begonias in them, I can't remember. It's been that long since I did them last summer. We'll see. And um, I don't know if you can see those. There's quite a few in there. So we'll make a little V just there, look. And we'll tap them. There's a little bit of uh, petal in there as well, but I think we're going to have to live with that. There's the petal lot. Plenty of seed and petals and all sorts. But if this works, look at the amount of seed we've got. Good gracious. 
I didn't think we had that much. <laughs> but that's, as you can see, quite a bit of seed. Remember, tepid water gently. And then, That should be all right to do it just there, I think. This is not Diane's clean film, by the way. Right, if I tighten the ends up a bit, like that. Tighten it right down as much as I can. And then put the Begonia label on that says own seed at the side. Obviously you can't put plant label in these. And then we can put that next to that one in there. So we've got quite a good comparison there. Right now the busy lizards, impatience, impatience. The name used to be impatience because the seeds fired off. They was impatient to seed so I think that's, but now we call them busy lizzies on the packet lot. So you do it exactly the same for busy lizzies. Right, I'll just show you the seed, which is a lot bigger this time than, than the begonia. And I'll put these in exactly the same and then come back to you. So we'll put the lid on and let them let them get on with it and hopefully in maybe two or three weeks we shall have some seedlings coming through tap it it soon globulates up if you like and runs off can you see it's nearly gone that and that's what I do in the morning it saves me if you wipe them every time boils the surface of them and then this one we will close just while it's uh, on the temperature is set at 22 degrees in there so it's quite warm hopefully in a few weeks we'll have some busy lizzies and some begonia seedlings and then we'll go through the potting on series till they're ready and then in the summer when we collect the seed we'll show you with you and show you how it's done now we'll knit down to the bottom greenhouse or the greenhouse as we stand at the moment and on the way we'll just take a quick temperature of the soil now we've made it down to the bottom greenhouse it's actually pouring with rain now while I took the temperature of the soil and um, Diane came down here while I did it because she didn't want to get the camera wet but it was at 7 7 degrees Celsius in the root zone last week it was 5 now we have had some rather sunny days so that was good but this cold easterly wind we have blown across the garden and the rain will probably drop it down again next week but we'll follow it and see how it goes now a lot of people have asked me how we go on with covering all this lot up at night so Diane came down and filmed it once I'd covered it and she'll put that in now so you'll see when they're all tucked up ready for bed now I've been asked how we fleece down at night so I thought the easiest way to come down here and show you it's uh, about quarter past four and everything's wrapped up for the night most of it all of it is on double fleece this time of year and it's all tucked up until tomorrow these are the potatoes they've got a 
double fleece on them as well, just to protect them from that burning the leaves. Now we did have a cold frame outside what we put the plants in prior to putting them out so harden them up but unfortunately it's rotted through so we've had to, I've still got the lids but the, the bottom's rotted through so rather than start to build one because I'm that busy we've bought one of those little poly houses that is behind me just to harden the plants up. Now I've put it between the two walls out there. It's it's enough just to harden the plants up and I'm sure it'll be all right. Now we will go out there and show you that little greenhouse or poly house, but not in this rain, it's far too cold. This is one of the things about this garden. If the wind's blowing from the east, cold wind, it cuts through the garden, it comes scuttling across the fields and causes down. I just want to show you the progress of the tomatoes. As you can see, they're about ready for potting up now. But I should put the cover back on because it's so cold. It's actually 10.3 degrees Celsius in here, so we'll cover them up. We'll just pop this cover on. As the temperature just drops suddenly more than what it is now, they will suffer. So that'll keep them quite happy. When they're ready for potting, which won't be long, they're just within the week, I think they'll be ready for potting. But I've got the pots up here ready. As you can see, this is the compost I've just purchased actually, and it was so cold done the pots, filled the pots and put the pots in here so they will warm up ready for receiving the tomato. They put it in there when it was stone cold it would be, wouldn't do them any good at all. So that's about it what we can show you this week in the very very cold weather. So I look forward to seeing you next week hopefully a bit warmer. So take care everyone, keep warm and we'll see you next week. Bye now.